I think we realize that people want to, you know, the allure of CrossFit is the community. When you bring someone into a private training session, they're not necessarily getting that community aspect. Welcome to the best hour of their day podcast with your hosts, Jason Fernandez and me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. All right, we've got Kevin, we've got Jen from T1 CrossFit, another husband and wife duo crushing it at the box and lots of big things coming in your lives. It's true. It's been a it's been a great evolution over the last two or three months watching this guy slowly hand in that resignation. Well, it was kind of a long time coming. Well, we should go back, right? So T one, I I'm went to college with the original owner, Terrence. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so then when he sold it, they came on. So, you know, there was a a bit of an evolution there. Not good or bad, just like different, right? Like you, you see this one like and I love Terrence. He's a great dude, super sharp, but like built a great box, you know, and then, but he had other stuff going on. And when that happens, you typically start to hit a plateau. And then they were like, hey, we think we can do this and plug him in essentially effectively full time. Yeah. You know, yeah, and sure. all of a sudden it's like pops right up. So it's been fun to watch. You're both members? We've been members since 2012. I actually grew up with Terrence, so I'm very move this, friendly. Move this a little bit closer to your mouth. I'm, I'm yeah, very yeah. Uh, close with his family, um, and we've been there since 2012, and then when he was playing around with the idea of selling the gym, then we took over ownership in uh, February of 23. So, coming up They're on like two a years, year. yeah, coming a up on two year. years, and the big news has been whether or not Kevin's going to leave his full-time career. Right. I think it's not so much whether, it's, yeah, it's, it's when. When. Yeah. when. When. So, yeah. it was maybe... Two months ago on a call, you were wearing a salmon shirt with salmon color. It's the Monday color. Yeah. It's like Tiger Woods on Sunday. He always wears red. Why Monday. do you remember that? I just remember him well, sitting because... at his desk at work, <laughs> and he was like, fuck this job. That's what you said, right? Something like that? But then what did you say? Not so many words, yeah. You yeah. told him to go shit on his boss's car. <laughs> yeah. And did you? No. Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. But you plan on it. We had other people on who've also, Gabby yeah. and uh, Brian were on the other day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always tell, so you know how Lee has been on the Monday calls. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, she's helpful, but I was like, I think you're really busy. Like, if you want to come off this call, I can handle it. I've not really told the Monday call that. I just always, I never explain Lee's absence. I'm just like, Lee's not here today, but she's not coming back. And we started like AIing the transcript to find the wins. And somebody in the in our Slack group was like, what is this? And it was like, Jason said, go shit on your boss's car. <laughs> and, and then I remember you came behind it and you were like, we need to post that. Yeah. <laughs> you should. Because they were like, I, I forget who it was. Like, like I double dare. They were like, somebody screenshot. Jay said, Jay told someone to shit on the boss's car. And then someone was like, Jay, why'd you say that? And I was just like, I said what I said. <laughs> and, and then was like, post it. But yeah. that's kind of like our euphemism for, it, it comes job. from the office, right? Oh, yeah. Andy Bernard shit on his boss's car. Yes. And then, you know, but so talk about this long thing, because it's been I, contentious is definitely not the right word. Nerve wracking might be the better word. Definitely. For the two of you. Yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, it's it's a lot when we both have full time jobs. We have children. Um, you know, we're trying to split our time between obviously the gym and our full time job. So, it's a lot. But I think that you know we've just learned that we work really well together. Uh, we love the gym. We care about it a lot. So, the kids care about it a lot. Um, so the they kids have grown up there. Yeah, they That's love cool. being Literally there. Literally have grown up. How old are the kids? That's cool. Uh, nine and six. Awesome. Yeah. So they are. They love being there. So we take them there, of course, and they work out there themselves. Um, but it's just, you know, it's it's trying to find that balance between everything because you want to be a good parent. You want to be a great leader to the community uh, and still do well in your full time job. Personally, this is completely Ackerman's belief. And I've got two kids as well. I don't think there's anything better than showing the kids mm -hmm. like I, I'm fending for myself out in the real world. Right. Or taking a risk and, and doing something I love like 
it's also great to show them, hey, mom and dad go to work, and yeah. But it's also great to show, like, hey, it's there's there's times in your life where a calculated risk mm-hmm. is is important to do. Yeah. We've done it, and now you're gonna do it. Yeah, it's I think so that's a scary point too. Okay. And we got to it with um, we we're sitting down one night, and you know, we were asking the kids what they want to do when they grow up. And you start hearing these things. It's like, I want to do this. I want to be, you know, I want to be a nurse practitioner like, like Jen is. Or, you know, I, I want to do these Hold things. How old are your kids? 96. 96. 96. They want to be a nurse practitioner? It's, it's what I am. So my Madison. daughter hears that and they're like. Yeah. Madison says she wants to be a coach. My yeah. kids think I'm yeah. a PE teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to go to God. They're like, daddy coaches gym. And I'm like, that's kind of accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're having these conversations and you're. And they want to. They want to do the gym thing too. They want to do these other. They Rocco wants to. I mean, I don't. I don't know what Rocco wants to do. He he's gonna do something, and it's gonna blow everyone's mind. I love that. Yeah. Wait, I was gonna. Is your yeah. kid's name Rocco? Rocco. Yeah. That's a, like. Is that a nickname yeah. or like? No, that's R O C C O. You got it. And, Rock and what? Rock. That's yeah. So you want him to like? He's gonna be a garbage man one day. Uh, that's that's why Rocco's be like. All the Roccos I know are garbage men. Well, he's that actually or, right now he's know, the director. Kind of mafia. Yeah. Well, he's also the right. boxer. Yeah. Yeah. He's the director of HR at the gym. That's yes. the big joke. Is that he's our six year old and yeah. he's so wild that we were like, oh, you know, people were coming in with complaints, yeah. you know, comments, concerns for the gym, and I'm like, send it to HR. And someone was like, Rocco. Rocco. Yeah. <laughs> it all goes to that. him. Yeah. But we had this conversation, and it was just like they want to do all these things. I was like, well, why? And I was like, well, you guys do, you know, your job, and then you do the gym. I'm like that's. It, it hit me. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I don't want them to think that they have to work multiple jobs. Mm-hmm. Like, I want them to find something they love and, and do that. Do you think that's a bad thing? No, I think we're showing them work ethic, but yeah. I think yeah. that their vision for the future is I need to have two jobs. So, for Rocco, one, you know, in general. our daughter was even saying, Charlotte and Rocco were both saying, you know, we want to, like, it was a very professional job, and it was like, you know, be a musician on the side, which is cool. It's like a oh. hobby. So, it's like they're picking a hobby, which is cool, and, you know, hopefully. CrossFit's one of their hobbies when they grow up too, um, but we just don't want them to think that they have to have these two full-time jobs. I, I would be like, hey, let's be clear, you don't have any jobs right now. Yeah, right, like, right. Let's get one job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You need to go check that trash out. <laughs> um, I think this is me. I don't think it's anything. I don't think you need to worry about that. I think you you show them, and then as they mature, right, like as their brain develops and they can comprehend more complex ideas, you'll be able to talk them through that. But I, I don't, I don't think any of us, right? Whether it's a leader uh, of a team, a gym owner, a parent, uh, a spouse, I don't think we should ever discount just what is the value of it showing an example. Sure. Right. We can always con- we can always contextualize it later, but like that that example of what they see, that's imprinted, like it's there. And I would err on the side of like, hey, yeah, they're gonna work hard, and we're like. Shit, he and I have been through the same thing. We're like, yeah, work hard, work hard, work hard. Like, hey, now maybe like work smarter. Yeah. Right. But like, I just thought hard work would solve all my problems. And it's like, nope, it won't. Push press is the easiest full suite software that you can get to run your business. One of the best things about Push Press, I would say, is the customer service. Hands down, they are the best. We know them all by name. They hear a lot from us. They know us. And they know us, <laughs> but they're there to help you. And they're also gym owners, so they understand. They are out of this world and helping their clients and just have a true passion for helping gym owners. They're so good with customer service. If you're not using it and your business is ready for it or you're having stress with the system you're using, it's a no-brainer to give them a call. Before we found Push Press, um, managing different things was very complicated and confusing. And so we just needed something that was more user-friendly. If I had to describe Push Press, it would be comprehensive because they really understand what a gym owner needs and they give us all the tools that we need to be successful. In fact, I don't think I've ever talked to somebody from Push Press that didn't own a gym. So they understood and I immediately connected with the people there and the products that they gave me were just, this is everything I needed. Like, where have you guys been my whole life? The best way that I can describe Push Press is absolutely phenomenal. If I had a gym owner friend that didn't have push press, I would tell them that it's life changing when it comes to having more time to work on the business and the support is coming from other gym owners that are trying to do the same thing that I'm trying to do. I want to talk about the 
Who's been to two masterminds? You went to Nashville. Just the one. Just one. Yeah, we, yeah, we didn't. Nashville. Oh, you missed. Yeah, yeah we missed Vegas. Vegas. Damn it, that's that, right. Yeah. Okay. Notice, thanks. Yeah. And why not budgeting? Yeah, yeah, that's totally right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> for whatever reason, I thought oh, you guys were. Oh, should have been budgeting. You knew we had a mastermind. Yeah, yeah. We were budgeting for the next one. But that was yeah. later. I do want to talk about close. the essentially like the last six or seven months because you guys have made some pretty significant strides growth wise. But I don't. I don't want to just talk about growth, right? But we we should touch on it, right? Like you guys have grown a lot. Yeah. Like, I don't even remember what the number is. We were um, under 70 yeah. when we started. You're like 140? 120, uh, high 120s right now. Yeah, okay. Like nearly so double nearly your membership. Double, yeah. wow. And two, two questions I have in there. One was, what happened? Right, like what was the one or two things that facilitated that? Because it wasn't just like, we're here, and then growth happens. And then was there an associated shift mentally that was the catalyst for that action you talk about the process we were there <laughs> we were present we were in the gym as much as possible you know, i mean literally doing the shaking hands kissing right. babies kind of thing and the members saw that and that was palpable right in the very beginning um just there was a, a drastic shift in just that they, we were there for all the classes. Um, How are you doing that? Or if you're both working full time jobs? Well, Rocco is running most of the yeah, Rocco is, yeah. is HR is he's is HR. really heading things up there. So he's clipboard. kind of yeah. um, yep. He's got the whiteboard out there and he's making his notes. Um, you know, we every opportunity we had, we were there, mm -hmm. and we've just I mean, we love the place. We mm -hmm. love the people. We want to be around these people that are all making each other better. And that was a, a huge shift. And we heard that right away. We heard it from our members. It was, you know, it's, it's so good to see you guys here so often. It was a, you know, not to say that it, it wasn't previously, but it was just, there, there was a difference. There was a, a shift in the language we were using, how we were talking to people, the way we were, you know, everyone was just rolling through the door. And it was like, you could see like, oh, okay, we're, we're here now. Yeah. And it shifted. In part, that's why you realize if I leave my job and we've grown, we've doubled with just showing up a little bit more, what can happen if I'm here full time? Yeah, exactly. Right. That's just. Well, the that's other the thing was, process. you know, so I want to highlight two things here. One is just the power of being present, mm -hmm. right? So just that shift, which is like, hey, we're not talking about like coaching better classes. We're not talking about like the toilets or my literally cleaner. just showing up. Just literally like, hey, good to see you today, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Like that. And then secondly, you know, I don't remember at what point we had the conversation, but we were talking about just, hey, focus. I think we had a conversation about like, hey, we need to get more leads. My, 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 my counter question is like, do we? I don't know. Yeah. How many are you getting now? And you're like, any new members. I don't know. And I'm like, we should probably figure that out first. And then, I don't know, I think it was within like two weeks. You're like, oh, they're just not responding. Like, what do you mean? Like, well, we have this thing. And I'm like, call them. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he's like, sign up three new people, sign up four new people. And I'm like, oh, we're just following up with them. Yeah. Right. Like immediately. We'll, right? we'll talk about that. Cause that's, we, I mean, we couldn't quantify how many times we've heard 99%. that. But so um, Fern saying you didn't really have a plan with leads. And then all you started doing was following up. Was that fairly accurate? That on top of we then, um, you know, revamped the website with Active Blueprint, yeah, got the yeah, lead yeah. system in place, and that really kickstarted. And Kevin manages that. So basically, at the moment he gets a lead, he's calling them right back, texting them right back. From work. From, well, and he's also working yeah. from, from home. From <laughs> home, yeah, yeah. The gym as well. Yeah. Um, but also, like, the instant contact with somebody as well as, um, you know, I think, you know, just... It's also, if he doesn't hear back from, you know, text message, it's email, it's call, you know, it's everything, call. Yeah. it's all the thing, but also uh, once again, and obviously you find some time to do it from your real job. Yeah. But again, if you had eight additional hours every day and you know, and I don't necessarily think you need to work those eight hours. Like you said, you have two kids. This is also about showing the kids, Hey, mom and dad are entrepreneurs. And because we do that, we have a more flexible schedule and we can do, we could show up to recitals and right, games. Right, right. Exactly. Right. So, yeah. Well, I want to I want to contextualize it just a little bit. So it wasn't like they were like not doing it and being lazy, right? Like a lot of people just don't know. But and not they, doing and, it effectively. Well, but even that, it's like understanding, which we do because we've seen it so many times, we've done it so many times, which is, hey, 
a minimal amount of effort put here mm-hmm. has exponential return. It's not just like, hey, you're going to, it was like, hey, just re- redirect your efforts right here because that creates other resources for you, which then you can then redeploy or re-leverage elsewhere. So it's like, hey, right here, we know they're there. Let's can let's utilize what we what the resources we're currently being provided, which is like this number of leads, whatever it is. And let's improve that process, and then I'll be able to turn around and use what I just was able to capture to build a team, create systems, do the other things. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a it's a short term pain to create the resources and capital to fix back end problems. Yeah, absolutely. Right. That's and also, saying. clearly, you didn't have a lead problem. You got seventy new members. So even if you're closing 80%, you've got 100 leads coming in. You yep. didn't, for a lot of people listening, it's like, the leads, but no, you don't. You're just not doing a good job following up. So Or you don't know, right? right. It's just like, it's always like, hey, what's the risk? We were talking about it yesterday on the talk to you. Data, you have a data risk, which is like, what's the number? You're like, I don't know. And I'm like, that's a problem. Okay. Right. From there, one big change you've made is your onboarding process. Mm-hmm. You went from free to paid onboarding. We, we did the reverse. The reverse. We they, did it, yeah, they did it backwards. Yes. Yeah. So talk to us about what that was like. Uh, 125 for two onboarding session, sessions is what we originally had set up. Mm-hmm. Pre-membership. So Pre-membership. Correct. What, and then what was your, or what is your membership rate? Uh, we're 160 right now for unlimited. Every? Four weeks. Yeah, yeah we're on four, four weeks. weeks yeah, four. We moved to four week billing then. And so you, you would say, yeah. hey, you have to join. But before you can pay us, it's 125 for two one hour sessions. Yeah, one on one with uh, mostly myself. Uh, Which isn't one enough. Would do it. Also, by the way, sixty two fifty an hour. Mm-hmm. So that was where, and we were, if it wasn't, you know, if I wasn't doing it, I had another coach doing it, and it was like, you know, I was paying him for like that personal training rate then, and you know, we saw that it was a big commitment for people to then go from one twenty five to then go to the you know the unlimited membership and. Um, that's a lot of money to put out for some people in our area. And um, we, we were not seeing any growth with it. We were seeing people turned away and they would never get back to us and they ghosted us almost instantly. Was that the, was that the policy in play from Terrence? Or did you add that? So it may have been from when, um, when they were, when Terrence and, the, and the, the GM were working with Best Hour previously. Because mm-hmm. um, we got them on board and it was, Kind of like one of those things he was looking at doing some some different strategies to to grow the gym and then it was like hey check out check out best hour and then it turns out he's like oh yeah i know fern but um that was put in place then and we kind of we moved forward with that and we tried to keep it going but then it was we were not seeing the success with it at all and then it turned into well let's treat it like a, a bring a friend um and then it turned into even more than that so i think we realized that people want to you know the allure of crossfit is the community when you bring someone into a private training session, they're not necessarily getting that community aspect. And we realize with Bring a Friend, you know, our first Bring a Friend, we had a lot of people come in the door, um, but it seemed like they got a sense of the community right off the bat. And like, of course, everybody's gonna say, we have the best community. We do have the best community. We have amazing ambassadors. We have great people. um, And we wanted the new people to see and meet these people Mm -hmm. and share their passion for T1. So we realized getting them right in the door for a free trial, they were, you know, our ambassadors kind of take over right away. You know, Kevin and I, when we're there, Kevin's actually left the house when he's not coaching the class to go meet the people at the gym that are coming in. We only live a mile and a half away um, from the gym. So it's, you know, it's putting in that time. And then the person that wants to, you know, is coming in the door is seeing, oh gosh, the, the owner's also coming in the door to meet me. But also these people came right to me and introduced themselves, gave me a tour and made me feel welcome. So we've heard from several new members that signed on that the ambassadors or, you know, whatever is the reason why they are, are joining because they treated them like a best friend. This is, there's so many things inside of that single piece right there. So a couple things. One is, Everything works. Not every not everything works for everybody all the time, mm-hmm. right? So I, you guys would know, but like, there's very little black and white in what we teach, mm-hmm. right? Like, there's a lot of left and right lateral markers, and they're like, "Hey, this is your room to play." We have to figure out what works, and being able to shift and say, "Hey, we we have a paid. We're going to go to free." Financially, does that make sense? Maybe, maybe not. But like, let's try it and see what happens, right? And 
I wouldn't be shocked if another two years you're like, hey, let's go back to the paid version. Right. Because now we have the confidence that this is effective, at which point they will convert. Because right? a lot of times when you're not converting, I'm like, it's not because there's no value. It's not because this person's, you know, not into it. It's because, like, you're terrible at sales because you're doing it from a defensive posture mm-hmm. and you're unconfident in what it is that you're doing. And that has to change. Um, but then thinking about the small tweaks that you made with regard to, and this is really what I want to impart to people, which is like, you do not have to do crazy things to expose people to really high value touch points yeah. it, from a customer service standpoint, right. which is, Hey, you know, like, Hey, Kevin decides to go to the gym. The ambassador agrees them by name. Like all of that can be coordinated, which is like, Hey, Jay's coming in. He's coming in at four thirty. Everybody know he's coming in there. So like when the new guy walks in, they know it's Jay. They're like, hey, you must be Jay. And they're like, oh, cool. And they're like, oh, Jay, I came from the house. I wanted to meet you. And he's like, oh, this is a, this is a really, really like high touch point, you know, high value service. And we've done no working out. We've not done anything. Right. It's just like, I feel welcome here. That is worth a lot Absolutely. to people. Yeah. yeah. There's also points where that price point, even though you're suggesting it's high for a lot, it's not high enough having a higher price point could potentially give them the feeling and oh this is way higher value well where you're kind of in that middle zone of like ah, it's like a hundred like it's more than i want to spend but it's also not enough to feel like i'm getting something amazing well this is kind of the evolution of that process i think because you don't know much about where they live but super highly affluent area there's no shortage of money in that area right at which point it's like, oh, it's not the dollar figure. It's like, oh, we're kind of not confident in what we're doing and we're, we're struggling to dis, to convey value with regard to doing that, which is perfectly normal, by the way. Yeah. Right. It's just like, oh, I don't really feel good about it. I'm like, well, how many times have you done it? Like twice. And I'm like, yeah, OK, let's keep going. Let's right. let's keep working on it. And it doesn't take that many reps until you start to get it. And that is another thing. You know, when I was like looking at prices, like, hey, we're not just going to arbitrarily jack up prices, but like, no. You have a long way to go before you guys have like capped out like price point, right. you know? But again, we're never gonna talk about price absent of value because that's not a thing, right. right? It should match. If it doesn't, you need to make the adjustment. Right. Yeah. So uh, the other thing you need to then track is retention, right? How Have you seen an uptick in retention since transitioning to the free onboarding? So instantly it was, and again, we, we bring them in for 14 days. It's a 14 day. It's not like you only you get 14 classes to use. No, if you start on the first, your last day, like they typically it's the, people are, it's the 14th. And we've seen also with Bring a Friend, not everybody comes every single day. They, right. they kind of pick and choose the, the times that they can get there when they get there with their friends. Um, the 14 days, though, you get then typically you're going to get at least two of the same strength day. If you come on that same time, if it's Monday and Monday strength. And then the Metcon, whatever it is, that's great. Um, so they get a feel for that. They get a feel for the different coaches that they're going to see at that time. But most of all, like we, we pull them into the community immediately. And that is the, the big selling point for us. And people are either signing up prior to their 14 days ending, or it's like, hey, my 14 days are up. How do I sign up? Mm-hmm. And you know, we, this has been an ongoing thing. It is uh, very rare that people are just like, they come in. And then they ghost us when it, when it comes to this. Um, some either come in for that first time and they're like, no, this is definitely not for me. Uh, I wasn't expecting this. But the others that are they're going through the process and they're, they're seeing them the same people at those classes, you know, especially if they're coming into, you know, Jen's Feral Five. It's, um, you know, they're getting a completely different twist on, on what the, the gym is like and it's 5 a.m 5 p.m 5 p.m 5 p.m so it's the people that are you know it's getting out of work and they got a relief you know yes oh they're feral they are phenomenal um but they're getting that and it's like oh hey here's a place where i'm connecting with these people i need to blow off some steam after work too before i go home and do my thing and that again meeting the ambassadors people that are then following up with them besides us it's it's huge. It, it has made such an impact on those individuals' lives. What has this transition been like for your coaching staff? Because a lot of affiliate owners' hesitations, well, my coaches can't handle new people coming to class. 
the beautiful part about it is most of our coaches are taking their classes as well. Yeah. So they're seeing them from a athlete perspective and being in class. Not then, while they're coaching, just so like that always, we understand. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. no, 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 there's, no. There's always a coach in right. class participating and then a coach like yeah. that we just we always are just rotating through each other's I just classes. wanted to make sure that the viewers understood you aren't trying a new model where we no. work out and coach oh, it's not hard to work out with them <laughs> no <laughs> do like this yeah. <laughs> definitely not no it's so there's no pushback because you come in as the new owners mm -hmm. although you were members and coaches there they were totally on board with let's let's give you this kind of have like a, a quasi assistant coach yeah and yeah, pretty much yeah. yeah yeah and yeah, and it, it must level their coaching up as well. It does. And they see it. And it's like, hey, I see them doing this. And they're typically coming to whoever is leading that class. And it's like, hey, check out on, you know, check out Jen. Yeah. Watch what she's doing there. And then we go over. And then it's like, hey, all right, we're going to get those touch points in. We're going to make sure that these things. That's going. a good point. That's the ideal version of that, by the way. What I mean by that is the instead of that coach who's in the class saying, hey, this is what I think you should do, because while that might help the athlete, it creates a friction point where I'm unintentionally, in many instances, undercutting the kind of authority or the expertise of the coach on the floor. And you have to instill that with your coach. It's like, hey, if you see something, if it's emergent, go ahead and intervene. But outside of that, let the coach know and then let them make the decision. Be like, hey, can you handle that for me? Like, yep, I got yeah. it. Cool. Or they're like, got it. I'll take care of it in just a second. I saw it as well. We're good to go and do it that way. But that way you create like a cohesive coaching unit instead of just like, ah, well, I don't think Kevin sees it, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of it. And it's just right. like, all right, well, now Kevin, looks, amongst yeah, now Kevin looks like an asshole when it was, it, it could have just been handled, you know, a little bit more effectively. Yeah, um, exactly that. You know, and now, because what that displays is like, oh, this is a cohesive team, mm -hmm. right? Because that person might see you walking and be like, hey, I see you. I'm a coach as well. I'm going to let Kevin know. And if he needs me to help, then I'll help you out. But like that just little tiny pieces of communication go a really long way in that scenario. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of built that right away with our coaches doing that communication and just making sure that we didn't undercut each other because we've seen it happen in the past at like our open gym times when all the coaches are there like working out and then there's like a new member that walks in and then one person gives an opinion and then another person comes by and then a third person and that initial person is like... Now Much. what the hell am I supposed yeah. to do? She gave me seven different squat yeah. stances. Yeah, exactly. like, yeah, yeah. So we like Kevin. I Kevin mostly takes my classes. So I, he'll, you know, when I'm circling the room, he'll be like, "Yo, check out, you know, Jay." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." And then I'll be like, "Ooh, yeah," and then head over that way. So it's just like a passing like whisper. And, and it's then, not. There's the high sign, you know. You get yeah. that little like. Yeah. Hey, like, yeah. It's, one of it's these. not set that other coaches take classes. It's just. Something that's happening at the box. So we we mandated that we would like the coaches to at least take two classes during the week because, of course, we all work full time. Um, we want everyone to be able to work out when they can, which most of the time for some of our coaches is during open gym, which is, you know, of course, not a, you know, coach class, you know, a structured co coach class. Um, but we want them to be a part of the community. So we want them to be able to, you know, be coached and see what's going on with the members and see how they move as well so that when they are coaching, they can kind of focus on different things. You've got to taste your food. Yeah. Like you have to experience it from the same lens as the athlete otherwise. And this is where you get huge disconnects between athletes and coaching staffs. When you're not like in the class, you're like, oh, it's fine, we're good. And you take the class, you're like, oh God, this kind of sucks. Yeah. Like, why are we doing this, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that's really important. And it's, uh, and again, it's important for the culture of your gym that everybody understands like hey this is the priority and this is also a good topic where i think some gym owners get way too dogmatic about it in both directions by the way be like oh, our coaches don't need to do that it's fine or be like hey you have to work out in every single class and i'm like how about you just set the standard which is you should be working out in the class when you can however i understand you have a job and three kids so like i get that and we're you not can paying you to be in this class right right that's a big part of it. right so it's just like hey i get that you can't make the four get it in at 4 30 make sure over there but here's the rules yeah. right i think that's a that's a reasonable relationship where there's respect yeah. in both directions absolutely affiliate owners if you want to grow revenue what you need to understand is impact first Offering the best classes and changing people's lives is how you get the revenue that you are searching for inside of the affiliate. And that starts with running fantastic classes here inside of the box. If that, if that is something that you are looking for, we've got world-class coaches that are gonna help you do that and help you run a better box. Everything from the coaching on the floor to the systems on the back end, we're gonna cover it all. Book a call, we'll see you guys on the inside.
So you've had these conversations mm-hmm. about bringing it back to next steps for you. What is it going to take for you to feel comfortable pooping on your boss's <laughs> pants? I, I, I hate to say it. I, not, not that I hate to say it. Um, I'm ready to. We've mentally. Seen, mentally, yes. I'm, I'm comfortable now. It was the... You know, the gym isn't where it needs to be right yeah, now. It has to make sense for your household. Exactly. Income-wise. The income had to be there. It, it had to be able to meet at least where I was, or I, I currently am with my job, to be able to say, okay, we can do this, because then we can just grow it from there. Because if when I'm there, these things happen. When we're both there, it's even better. You know, it is a just compounding effect that, you know been taking PTO on Mondays and Tuesdays throughout the summer because, you know, being home with the kids, like I want to be there. They have, you know, camps and things like that. So when I've taken off and I'm there. Even in those small doses. Those small doses. Yeah, we've so had other that into Haley. five days a week and yep. it's even more. So yep. many things get done. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like that accomplishment. It's like, oh, hey, by the way, I checked this off our list today for, you know, our homework assignments or whatever it is. It's like, oh, I got this done. I got in touch with these people. You know, I connected with all the leads today. They're coming in, and it's like, get it. Then, you know, it goes right to um, right to the Slack for the coaches. Hey, be on the lookout. This person's coming in at this time. I may be there. I may not. Um, I'll try and at least show up for the beginning or the end of it just to greet them. Um, ambassadors get the text. We have the ambassador posse text message. And, like, hey, be on the lookout for this person. And immediately they're like, hey, I'll be there at this class. I'll be there at this one. I'll make sure, you know, to greet them. And they roll in with their ambassador shirts on, and it's like, hey, where are they? I'm, I'm ready to go. Right. What, so what you just outlined right there is a perfect explanation, an example of what the compounding effect of working on the right things is inside of the gym. Right, because right. like three, four things just happens. Right. And, that one- and then Marcus is always like, hey, five hours. That's like, if you need to have five hours of you know, dedicated, like making sure that you're building systems and making sure those communication channels are exactly what you want them to be so that the information f- flows freely and that we can convert that lead. Um, and a lot of people struggle with this because they go to the gym and they're like, what'd you do to them? Like, well, I mopped the floors and I rearranged the rings. And I'm like, that's not the right thing, right? I'm not saying that doesn't need to happen, but that's not going to move the business forward, right? You need to do some other things and you need to clean the fucking floor, right? Like both of those things need to happen. Right. But what you both have done, you know, and specifically Kevin, because I interact with Kevin more, is just like working on the right things, right? And you're like, hey, if I get two days, this is what I get working on the right things. And then if I get five days, you're, you're, you're actually seeing the speed build. Like it's happening real time. You're like, oh, I'm doing the right things and it's working. And I'm like, correct. That's exactly how it works. So this is what a lot of people struggle with when they're particularly in that making that transition. You know, Boucher is a good example of it. Uh, Louis is another good example of it. Steph Graham is another good example of it. Uh, We have a ton of new people that are like that light starting to go off, which is like, hey, there's a bunch of mundane stuff that like needs to get done. But quite frankly, like it can wait. It, w- it will get addressed later, but right now, what's the most important thing? Hey, let's make sure that we're paying attention to front end lead capture. Let's make sure that we're keeping the people that are here and having those appropriate interactions. When you do those things, it compounds. And now I can go back, okay, now we need to go back and make sure that the bathrooms are clean and the class is a little bit more organized, but convert better on the front end, make sure you keep who you've got, and that will give you the bandwidth and the resources to make sure that you can fix everything in the middle as well. Um, Because those two things bring you the fuel for the business. So you guys have done a really, really cool job. And it's been very fun to watch you put those things in place. And Kevin, like, start taking that foot and put it slowly out, uh, further out the door. Yeah. Yeah. So when is Um, it? What's the date? It's it's hard to... uh, There is a date. I just don't know what it is yet. It's like burning the PTO is... um, You might as well use that up, right? And also know the... It's hard to go like one for one yeah. with a with a quality job, right. right? Like it's hard to just replicate that income. But as you've already experienced, there's a there's a, a time where this risk is going to be worth it. Oh, yeah. I just need to get I need to be willing to take that leap of faith to open that up. Yeah. And just, your wife has been, to be on board. Yeah. Right. I, I've been on board since day one. And, and you were you nervous know. on that first call. <laughs> Yes, I mean, she's like I'm a in nervous the back, person. Like, don't you like? I'm always a glass, a glass half empty person. I always just think the worst. So, I, but then I, you know, as I took a step back, and I will say this: like, 
honestly, like my, neither of us had business, you know, backgrounds before coming into this. So this was really like scary for both of us, obviously jumping right on board, taking ownership. But the way that we have evolved as, is exponential just because of what we learned like from you guys. So knowing that like we have you guys as like, okay, if shit starts to hit the fan, what do we do now? Like what, where did our focus go? Where did things go awry? We know that we have you as the backup, you know, just to ask questions. Sort of ground us even. Backup yeah. for us to convince our coaching. Yeah. yeah. Burn, we need you. But also yeah. don't forget, you know, we don't like to, you know, we like to burn the ships, right? We like to right. poop on the boss's car. <laughs> but don't forget, like you can always get a job. That's what that's right? what I was like, gonna say. Yes, we like that wasn't me. That. Yeah, like yeah. I know. Always find another job. I eat a lot of beans, and that <laughs> might look like it's mine. But that was you know <laughs> Not that me. was Sally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, you'll get you know. Yeah. We've never. I say never. I, I'm pretty confident we've never had someone who left their job have to been like, ah, that was a big mistake. It might be like cool. Now I got the box to the level I want. And I hired a GM and I can go do something else or I want to go do something else, but I, I will. It has happened, but it's not that what you're suggesting. I can yeah. think of maybe one or two where they're same situation. There's a couple where they made the decision like you're going to go in. Yeah, it was and the it wrong was, person. It was the wrong person. We're like, oh, we have to swap those people. It was just like we thought this was the right person. It's not. It should have been the other because, person. Oh, we're not making enough. No, no, money. it wasn't yeah. because there wasn't it wasn't there wasn't the enough there there wasn't enough meat on the bone it was just the wrong person yeah um but that's the only thing i can think of and i think it maybe happened like twice yeah and i'm excited just because it's been really uh, a story arc on my monday calls yes All right we've seen it and we've seen wait, it sarah happen. jensen sure. and, and then, mike yeah. they came up to kevin and they're like you're the guy that's gonna poop on your boss's car. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to see you out of the like zoom box you know oh you're much taller that's gonna be bad you yeah. know <laughs> Yeah. Oh. And then, yeah, we had, like I said, we had Gabby who did it. She yeah. literally, you know, yeah. Well, she did it like, um, you know, a year after Brian did it. Like, Brian yeah. leaped first and then she went. Because, like, you, you know, like, and everybody gets the itch. They're like, oh, like, we see what this is now capable well, of and, doing. And also, they're a great example of Brian did it and the business, like, I would have, remember, like, 8X? No, we didn't 8X, but I mean, it I 10X. think. 10X. It was. Numbers, yeah. It was. No, it was massive. It was they a ran a bring of, <laughs> They ran a bring a friend week like shortly after and like exploded. They've tripled the business for yeah. sure. Um, and now that, that doesn't happen to everybody, but the point is, is because you can go in again, if you go in there and you do the wrong things, it's not going to happen. Right. Yeah. It's just not right. But you're going to. You go in there, and you do the right things. You will see that. And the other thing it, is just, it's not. I'm always the realist in this scenario, right? Meaning, it, like, okay, if I'm going to make that leap, it is reasonable to expect there will be a short term, like maybe what feels like step backwards in order to go forwards, right? Like there, there is that transition that has to happen in most instances. Most people are looking for the perfect alignment of like, all right, it's here and this is what I was getting. So I'll just turn this off Wait, and I'll go over here. And for what? it's usually like, uh, there's going to be a little sp a spot there in the middle, but this is where knowing what I should be doing in order to cover that ground as fast as possible becomes the name of the game. Right. So. And I think that was also a conversation that we had at one point. Yep. It was just the, you know, hey, before you do, it's like before you do, make sure, okay, touch base with Nick. Yep. Do these things. Cover Nick being all, the budget. Yeah. yeah. Like cover all these bases first and then like look at it. And then we saw it start to happen. Right. And it was like, okay, we, we started doing those things. It wasn't, you know, let's do all of it at once here. It's like, okay, no, uh, we're just going to focus here. We just focus here we, now. You're slowly ratcheting up your odds, which is like, if you know all the information, be like, hey, all right, all right, all right, 5% five percent, five percent more chance of success. Another 5%, another 5%. And it, but at the point you're like, oh, it's 50-50. I'm like, I'll take that bet. Yeah. I'll yeah. bet on me on this one. Like, my odds are good here, right. you know? Do it for Rocco. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to keep him employed as HR director, yeah. right? so he's already been getting <laughs> You might get in trouble, though. Watch hey. what you say. Yeah, right? <laughs> you can pay your kids. It's a tax write off. Yes. True. Um, Very, yeah. So, anyway, it's been super awesome to watch I'm you guys. Um, you guys are really a really good example of going in there, focusing on the right things, making those shifts, being comfortable pivoting on ideas. It's like, hey, going from paid to unpaid. And again, everything works, it just depends on how you do it. And uh, super pumped because you guys are just starting to build that momentum to to continue going. So and super cool. He'll never say this. And now you're gonna have to poop on your own car yeah, when well, you quit next time. Marcus will never say this, but if you when you poop on video for him, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he he likes to see that. Yeah, you'll see. It.
Cool. I wouldn't need Best hour tag at the yeah. bottom There's of it. No yeah. need to be evidence of that. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. No, you're doing great stuff. I look forward to seeing you in Salmon tomorrow. No. No? no. There's no be all tomorrow. There's like no tomorrow. It's we'll not be back in Joel, anyway, Joel so. will be there, but uh, next week I'll see you in Salmon on the Monday Momentum call. And keep doing great things at T1. Yeah. Nice well, nice shot, guys. guys. Appreciate you Thank both. You. Thank cool. you. Thank you. We'll see you guys Appreciate next time. It. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms, or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.